What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Phil Shocker. Thank you, 96 Shock here with our new draft here for you guys. We are doing the team takeover. We are here in the FDN, the Player Draft Network, for Season 3 of its Poltergeist Division. Uh, we uh, joined this league because of the fact there was a drop due to some just really just salty people and Bad mouthing and just, it's a bunch of chaotic stuff. But we ended up being a part of this league. It's a new league. It's National Dex. And, you know, I haven't done a National Dex league in so long. I wanted to be a part of one more before all of them stop. And, Ooh, excuse me, late night. I'll definitely try not to make this uh, analysis so uh, fast and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, if you guys are excited for this, leave a like, give it a rate, subscribe if you are new, join the Fresh Shocker Crew today, because you're going to be playing with me. We do have uh, LPL and or NBA kind of wrapping up here soon. One or the other, I could be not making leagues in. One, I could be making leagues in. You never know. So, And I have some time, I think, to you know spare off a board with league that we could... Uh, whew, excuse me. Kind of use up stuff and everything like that, so... There's that. So, let's go over the team that we originally had and go over the transactions we were able to have because we had a whole lot of transactions. So, this was the original team. It had Dragapult, Mandibuzz, Mega Gardevoir, Registeel, Vaporeon, Mimoshwine, Talonflame, Rosalia, Kangaskhan, Pinsir, and Terrakion. As you can clearly see, I dropped everything except for... The Dragapult, Mandibuzz, and Registeel. Um, as you can tell, I didn't go with a Mega. Um, there wasn't really a Mega that stood out to me that I wanted to really kind of just go. Because Megas left on the board were Megas I've already had experience with. Had some usage out of. Maybe would have loved to get on the try, but then would have conflicted with the typings I wanted. This is that, so... Ooh, excuse me. Sorry. Oh. There's a lot of complications to what I wanted for, so. Let's just go over the team and just go from there. So let's kick it off here. I'm going to go over the th reason why I kept the first three. Now, I think it's no surprise why we keep Dragapult in this team. I would be an idiot if I dropped Dragapult. Uh, I wanted to still keep Dragapult regardless because of the fact that good elite speed here really could have mixed offensive Pokemon, fully physically offensive, fully specially offensive. This thing could be so much more than utility. I actually used... Uh, Dragapult as a screen setter, believe it or not, in one of the matches I've used to do when they uh, first used it. And it almost worked. It almost worked, which was awesome. Oh my god, excuse me. I'm not trying to yawn too much here, guys. But uh, Dragapult is just so versatile. I really don't need to go into details about Dragapult to Dragapult. It is for naming it to 8K47 for the 8K47 planes because it literally. Kind of has the build of that. Um, if anyone knows what those actual like triangle planes are, can you let me know in the comments below? Because I would rather rename it that. I think it's on AK47. Something like that. But it's right now what's going to be what it is. So, Dragapult, really, really good one. Now, the reason why I kept Mandibuzz. Well, Mandibuzz has been a Pokemon I haven't gotten a chance to use a lot of. And I uh, really got into uh, do much with. But is one of the best Dragapult counters in the entire game. Is one of the best Aegislash counters in the entire game. Just overall was one of the best Pokemon to get to pair with it. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, guys. Oh, my God. And uh, Pebble. I'm naming it Pebbles, obviously. It is the best nickname for a female Mandibuzz. Um, I also felt like Mandibuzz being a defogger for the team was really good. Uh, it's got a decent speed tier for outspeeding bulk with pivoting. Heavy boots makes this thing a nightmare to have to deal with. And good pivoting as well with the U-turn from Dragapult. Now U-turn on this is really good. So overall, I felt like Mandibuzz was just a really good mod to have on this team. And I felt it was really good. So. With the last one we kept on the team being Iron, the Registeel. Uh, this gave me a Stealth Rocker, which I think was really cool to have. A Pokemon that can kind of go versatility in terms of its offense. But really, it came down to its defense. Like, its defense is really offered quite a lot for it, which I think is really, really great. Um, 
Red Steel has been a Pokemon I've also been wanting to try for such a long time. And uh, I'm really excited to give it a shot. I've kind of used it here and there before, but never for a full season. So I am very excited to give uh, Red Steel a go around here. And I think pairs really well with the team uh, overall. So I felt like, you know what, And when it came to Steel types that were on the board, there were a couple I could have grabbed. Like Celesteela was still on the board, believe it or not. Aegislash was still on the board. But I just felt like I want to go with Ready Steel. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, guys. I really just want to go with Ready Steel. I feel like Ready Steel just would be a lot more fun to try. So now let's go into the draft, basically around what I wanted to pick from the free agency. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Lando T was on the free board. And I wanted to grab Lando T. And I was going to. But unfortunately for me, um. The person that actually battled the team that we took over, uh, turns out they were going to get Lando T in free agency before we could make any transactions. And unfortunately for me, they actually did. And first off, it was kind of good. I realized it, but now it's bad because, uh, well, I couldn't get Lando T, which sucked because I wanted to use Lando T so badly was going to be doing what I wanted, which kind of had the hell of, um, had the idea of wanting, you know, option for default, which is really nice, a really strong ground type. So there was that. Sorry I've yawning so much, guys. You guys can tell it's getting pretty late at night for me here. Plus I've had some drinks, aka soda, not alcohol. And a little bit of snacks as well, so I've been kind of tired a little bit, so do apologize. So I wanted that, but there was another Pokemon I was thinking about, and there was two ground types on the board that I was thinking about getting. The one that you see on your screen, and then Diggersby, because Return was allowed. The only thing that was banned in the league that is is Hidden Power. Return was allowed, and Signal Beam was allowed. So I was thinking to myself, do I, do I really want to go for this? And... After finding out that it was confirmed to have this, I think this was a no-brainer of a pickup here, which I'm also still surprised was in free agency. We picked up Sheer Force Lando Eye. That is right, baby. Gara is back. Um, last time I used uh, Lando Eye, we actually won a championship in WWC. And Lando Eye actually picked up a couple of kills. It actually was on a bit of a, a little bit of a hot streak for a few games until it kind of just stopped coming. Lando, I just feel like that one bond you gotta be a little careful with bringing if you want to bring it every single week, just from a matchup perspective and stuff like that. So, uh, I really do like uh, Landorus. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, guys. I really, really like Lando. I, I think it's really good. I think Landorus overall, I think is still gonna probably be the best out of the three. Uh, Thorn and Fenny fight for the second and third every time for me, but Lando, I just think is always gonna be great. Lando Eye of Sheer Force, there is no real switch into this Pokemon. Really great offensive stat. If you take it into consideration for Life Orb Sheer Force, it makes its special attack stat look so much more stronger than its physical attack stat. Uh, 101 sp speed is actually a really good speed tier for this team as well, so I think that's really going to benefit the draft as well. So just overall, it gave me another optional Defogger for this team and another optional Rocker for the team as well, which I think is really great. Uh, just overall, a really good Pokemon, and I'm uh, really excited to get Lando Eye another shot. Now, picking up this, I need a replacement. I need a new grass type. I need a poison type. And I really need a good poison type that can help the team. And that's where Rose Raid fit into this deal. Rose Raid, well, we're going with a different nickname with Rose Raid this season. We're going to go try out Bloom. Let's see how Bloom fits this one. Uh, I've had Masquerade. I've had Rose. But they're just generic nicknames. They're not like, oh, uh, like standout nicknames. I want to have a kind of like standout nickname that I'm going to like and everything. But we're going to give Bloom a try right now for this season. Uh, what I love about Rose Raid is a really good specialty defensive piece. Also, that gives me a great strong specialty offensive threat as well. Uh, based on your speed tier, which is really, really nice because it's really good. It's actually a good sparker. It has options for eject pack, uh, eject pack for um, pivoting, which is really, really nice. And overall, it just provides the team a very great uh, option for your uh, hazards. 
Oh my god, why do I stop? Keep yawning. But what's really great about this Pokemon is spikes and toxic spikes. That's what's really going to benefit this team because now I've got a Dragon Ball and a Lando Eye. They're getting support from wet, from spikes and toxic spikes and stuff. You are now forced to bring a lot of hazard, brings guaranteed hazard removal for this for this team, excuse me. And I'm just so, I'm super pumped for that. I really am. I really think Roserade provides such really good offense for this team. I think it just provides really good utility for the team as well. And I'm just so excited for that. So, um, as much as I really wanted to keep Vaporeon, I decided to get rid of it because I've kind of come to terms that Vaporeon is not all that good of a Pokemon. Uh, and it's not because of a certain someone in my past, and that's our favorite Pokemon. No, it's not. That's a story for a different time, if I haven't already explained it. But I just feel like Vaporeon's passivity is just not as good. I mean, yeah, it's great at what it does and from a cleric's perspective and everything like that. But I, I really just don't like it all that much. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you guys. But overall, I do love Primarina. And I know what you're all thinking. Yes, I understand. I use this Pokemon way too much. Get off my back. I love this Pokemon. Primarina has been one of my all-time favorite waters, and if not all-time favorite fairies to draft in Draft League. It is such a good Pokemon, dude. Spec sets are a menace. Defensive offensive sets are a menace. It is just a great Pokemon, and I love this mom to death. It is my second favorite unit. Uh, Lolan starter. And... This Pokemon is just amazing. I, I love it so much. Primarina Marina just really hits a lot. Not only does it give me a relatively decent enough bulky water and fairy, it just gives me a strong hitting water and fairy as well. With a decent enough coverage for what it can provide you. It can beat some of its counters out there. So really excited for Primarina Marina this season. And I'm hoping to have some more fun with it. So kicking off with the second half, I cannot tell you guys how happy I am that I can get to use this Pokemon. We are grabbing Lycanroc Dusk, which I think is a crime that it was in free agency. This has been a Pokemon that I kid you not. I kid you not. I have not used this Pokemon in years. Literally years. And I am so happy to have it back. It is one of my favorite Pokemon to use. Ooh, excuse me. Oh. Sorry about that. It's one of my favorite Pokemon ultimately to use. It is so great. Base 110 speed team really good for the team as well. Provides such good speed. Tough Claws boosted attacks. And it looks like it might have buffed its stats slightly in terms of attack. Because 117 isn't weird for a base attack stat. That doesn't make any sense, really. I, I'm i so excited to have this Pokemon. It's been so long, literally years since I've used this Pokemon. And I finally get to try it again. I was originally going to have this in a different league, but due to the fact of how my draft went in that league, I had no choice but to make a lot of big changes that I didn't really want to make to my draft. Ultimately, it helped get me to playoffs, which is great, but I really would have loved to have had this Mon in my draft. We get the opportunity to do that now, and I am so excited for this. I am so excited for using Lycanroc. Obviously, we are naming it Princess after my beautiful, lovely dog that I no longer have due to my parent, due to my mom back in the day. So, but this is for my dog, Princess. I do tell, I always miss her. And hopefully one day I'll get to meet her again somewhere. So, next up, we picked up Miltang, them others. Maybe I should call them them to be easy, but I feel like you. Now, why to grab Miltank? Miltank was another option for rocks, which is really good for my team. But this was the one reason I drafted it. Scrappy. Scrappy was the absolute must for this Pokemon. Because now, if I want to run a Curse Set, which Curse Set is very viable on this Pokemon, um, it gave me Stealth Rocks. It gave me a Ghost Immunity, which I desperately needed for my entire draft. Just because, like, oh my god, you guys have no idea how badly I lost to a ghost type. I now have two good ghost answers for this team. I would have liked maybe one more, but beggars can't be choosers. Uh, I will say my team is heavily weak to ground. 
I really better hope to pray to God I can find some way to get around ground types. But, um, Mill Tank. Mill Tank just is really good defensive normal types. Not the greatest, like, specially defensive, but it's one of those physically defensive Pokemon that can pair off with Mandibuzz or Registeel as a physically defensive role. And just overall, I feel like it's such a good Pokemon. I am so excited to try Mill Tank again. Mill Tank's been a Pokemon I've been having some fun with, had some decent success with, so I'm really excited to give Mill Tank another go around. And just be super ecstatic to try it again after a while not using it. Now this, I am telling you right now, is a goaded fire type. This is such a slept on fire type that if you sleep on this boy, he will kill you. This boy got me three kills in one game with sub, sub three attacks, and I got three KOs. And one of those KOs was a Dragonite. A Dragonite. Magmortar is an absolute beast of a fire type. And really, I needed a really good fire type. And for what points I had left, I really felt like Magmortar fit the bill for what I wanted and or if needed for my team. So uh, Flame Body, though, is also a really good option to get some burns, which is very important as well. But it's definitely going to force potential for pads prep, which is really good. Um, but Magmortar is just a great Pokemon. I'm really excited. Also, this wasn't an, an, an unintentional, but I accidentally drafted the both Gen 4 trade evolutions for Magmar, for Magmar and Electivire. This was totally unintentional, but I found it funny right after the draft, and I realized it. It was so funny. But I love me some Overdrive, baby. You guys know I absolutely love this Pokemon. It is one of my all-time favorite electrics to use. Even though I've only used it like two or three times, I have such amazing success with Electivire, and I am so excited to have him back on the team. Gives me an electric immunity, which helps the team as well. I already have it with kind of having with uh, Landorus, but now having another guarantee with immunity, which benefits at anything, is really good. Pivoting with Bolt Switch is really good as well. Good coverage out the wazoo as well. Just overall, an amazing, amazing electric type for this team. And I know I need an electric type so Badly, I really, really did. I really needed a really good electric type for my draft. Because if I didn't have one, I probably would have lost um, a lot of my games out there. So I'm so excited to have Electivire on this team. And I'm really hoping to do well with it this season. And last but not least was really just a budget whatever pickup I had left. And uh, that was ESP the Meowth Stick. And, um, really Meowstic is just here for screen support. Maybe some Yawn Tech and stuff like that. But, uh, other than that, nothing really else for it. It's just, it's, it's, it's got 104 speed, which is great, but it, 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 it. I will tell you guys this. I wanted to use Porygon to end a little bit Marowak. I wanted to kind of pull off a little bit of, like, a pseudo Mount Hay kind of combo team right there. But the problem was this. I really couldn't be able to fit it because of points, but also mostly because of the fact that I kind of struggled with having Ghost on this draft, Dark types as well. It, 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 it was so hard to fit everything on here, and I really wanted this one. So, yeah, that is the team, guys, this season. Uh, let me know which Mon you are super excited for. Honest to God, even though, yes, I do have Sheer Force Lando Eye and I have Drag Bolt, this is the mon I'm most excited for on this team. I kid you not. I am so excited to have Lycanroc. Cannot wait to use it this season. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I know this video seemed a little drag out because of the fact that I yawned. It seemed like I was a little tired and not focusing there. I do apologize there. But tune in for week six. We do not have to worry about our week five matchup. Tune in for our week six matchup where we take on the... I believe it is the Giratina Victinis. I, I could be wrong about that, but uh, we take on the something Victinis next week. And a uh, pretty good matchup for us there. So uh, we are now 2-3 and three minus 7. So we kind of have to win out to guarantee playoffs. We win three of our four games. It's about a 50-50 chance at the low seed that we can make. If we lose two games, that's basically it. Playoffs are dead. But that's ultimately fine with me. Uh, I kind of came in this league just kind of have some fun. 
try out my luck against some new players and also try to get some mods I haven't really used before or mods I barely have gotten to use and want to try again. Or mods I just really want to use again. So I'm super excited for this draft. I hope you guys are too. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys for week six of the FDN. And until next time, guys, I'm Phil Shock and I'll see you guys next time.